uh, the minister asked the little girl, she was taking her confirmation test, and he asked her, what is an epistle? What? What is an epistle? E-P-I-S-T-L-E. And she said, an epistle is the wife of an apostle. <laughs> uh, this is program number 14,153. A chat with Glendora. And this is right in the middle of November. November 15th. And no snow yet. No snow in November and no snow in October. The climate is about two, a month or more behind. I believe that God is everything there is. I do not believe that there is any power other than God. It's as, like the little boy, you know, uh, selfish, me first, ego. They don't exist. That's pretty hard for you to take, isn't it? Well, they don't exist. Uh, it's like the little boy, and he was asleep. And he was thrashing and fighting and clawing and shivering and shaking. And his mother came into the room, the bedroom, around 8 or 9 o'clock. And she awakened him. He said, the monsters, the monsters, the monsters are here. His mother said, I don't see them. Well, they, they were here. It's a figment of the imagination evil. It just doesn't exist unless you let it exist in your thinking. Shakespeare said, nothing is good or bad except the thinking make it so. Nothing is good or bad except the thinking make it so. Nothing is good or bad but the thinking make it so. And even if it does exist evil, you do not have to pay any attention to it. You can keep your mind focused on good and love and caring and sharing and happiness and jokes and creating. Ooh, that's very important. Do you know that we all have the same job to do? All of us. Our job is to create. The great thing about our God is creativity. Creativity and then operation of what has been created. No. I think God is the only power there is. Nothing else exists except God. If I tell it to you this way, and stop using the word God, and use the word, another name for God is love, you'll understand it, won't you? Nothing exists but love. And if you don't believe it, then know it. It isn't here. It's like the little boy with a nightmare. It's a product of wrong thinking. And it started early in your life. People telling you that bad things are happening. No. They should have told us that good things are happening. Good things are happening. And you know a consequence of saying that God is everything there is and God, this is the allness of God. You know what a consequence of that is? You and everybody else, all of the rest of us, you and everybody else and all of the rest of us, we are some of God. Reductio ad absurdum. 
if God is all there is, there's nothing left out to be. You have to be some of God. And that means when I talk to you, I have to remember that you are some of God, that you are beautiful, brilliant, that you are a spectacular creator, an organizer, an operator. And I have to believe that you are just like me. And you like to be treated the way I like to be treated. Matthew, verse, chapter 7, verse 11. The wholeness of God. Here's a model. Make believe this is a human being. And you cut off the hand of that human being. You put it over here. Is that hand going to live without the human being? No. Are you going to live without God? No. No. You can. That's the wholeness of God. The onlyness of God. The oneness of God. And we all have the same job to do. Creativity. You know what's that about God? God is all about creativity. Love is all about creativity. Something new all the time. What has held our attention in the past 50 years? Electronics. And it is about 50 years. What held our attention before that? I think it was cable TV. And 50 years before that, I think it was broadcast TV. And 50 years before that, radio and movies. Do you notice how they all have a hegemony of about 50 years? And before radio and movies, what was it? Vaudeville. And before that, the minstrels. So you have the oneness of God, the allness of God, the wholeness of God, the onlyness of God. and our oneness one with each other and we all have the same job to do to make the universe grow to keep the universe going growing and glowing and look how it's been go grow and go for the past billion years four billion years well whatever that is we can't get into that and remember we said be careful of of gravity because gravity and love have something very much in common and they might be coming from the same area. So you go out and you love and you help and you care and you share and you do all kinds of good things like the Boy Scouts who picked up the boxes of food that we bought to give to the poor people in November. I want to tell you about Harry Truman. The biography of Harry Truman is very, very interesting. And he had quite a background before he was made president of the United States by the death of our dear Franklin Delano Roosevelt in April 1945. Harry Truman had a very, very good background. He did a lot of government work before he was made vice president of the United States. much good work and he had a turbulent administration and the newspapers came out and said Dewey is elected <laughs> well 15 minutes later to an hour later they found out that the newspapers were wrong Dewey was not elected Truman was elected and it heavily, heavily everything was on the Republican side but Truman kept going out across the country 31,000 miles with his message with his message and he kept going and going and going 
So the newspapers 15 minutes later or an hour later were wrong. Truman was elected. Isn't that funny? Uh, Phil, mm -hmm. uh, what were those things we were going to tell everybody? Uh, before the jokes, you were going to talk about Hemmings and Nascentia. Oh, well, Hemmings, yeah. Phil helped me put an ad in the Hemmings Motor News. Phil went out and took a, a picture on his phone, and we were able to email it to Hemmings Motor News up in Bennington, Vermont that we're looking for somebody to restore the Lincolns. I found somebody who would give me $200 for each Lincoln, crushed. And that was late in the evening. Well, for me it was late. It was 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. And overnight and by morning, that's a cruel thing to do. That's not kindness, to crush that beautiful car, that lovely metal, all those electronics, all those motor parts, all that luxury that's in those cars. No, that's not a kind thing to do. And so we revised it to put an ad in Hemmings Motor News. Is there anybody out there who would like to restore a couple of Lincolns? A 1980 Lincoln Town Car Continental Mark VI. That was the year a Lincoln made the Mark VI, the luxury car. And then a 1993 town car. And that we would charge $1,000 for them as a package. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. They are very luxuriously comforted in their garage right now. Mm -hmm. With their budge auto covers over them. Then what else, Phil? Nesentia. You had a conversation with them today. Oh. So Nesentia gives me 41 hours a week of home help. Thank you, Nesentia. Thank you, Medicaid. Thank you, Consumer Direct. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 41 hours of help every week. Well... Wednesday morning and Friday morning and Thursday afternoon, Glendora is all alone. And when Glendora wakes up in the morning, there is a pile of wet diapers. And nobody's coming in on Wednesday and Friday morning until 1 o'clock. Uh, Glendora is able to take care of herself as far as washing and getting dressed. But she cannot see to take care of those wet diapers. Do you think that they should sit around the house until 1 o'clock and nobody take them to the dumpster? Well, Nesentia thinks so. Who is Nesentia? They are the insurance company that Medicaid pays a premium to every month to take care of Glendora. Glendora pays Medicaid $1,700 a month to uh, buy the things that Glendora needs. But do you think those diapers should sit around there from 5 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon unattended in the house? And do you think that Glendora should sit around from 5 o'clock until 1 o'clock when Amy comes in without anything to eat? Well, Nesentia does. Nesentia thinks that's fine. That's Nesentia Insurance. They're headquartered in Syracuse. My nurse was in centuries in Buffalo. Okay. And somebody else is, does things from Utica. Somebody else does something from Syracuse. Somebody. Finger where, Lakes. Where is Nesentia here in Albany? Well, thank you for all of the pull-up diapers you send me. Thank you for all of the crotch pads. Thank you for all of the ch chucks. I don't use those. I just use the pull-ups and the crotch pads. Thank you for all of that. What else were we going to tell the people, honey? Jokes. Oh, goody. Mm -hmm. Well behaved. The rich old lady said to the young man, you're so well behaved. And the young man says, well, it was my father. 
When I was a boy, every time I was well behaved, my father would pat me on the head and give me a penny. And by the time I was 18 years old, I had $20 and a flat head. <laughs> Two miles from land. The ship was rocky. This is not the SS Gondora ship. It's another passenger liner, and it was very rocky. And the passengers were getting very nervous. And the captain said, you go out there to the steward, and you calm the people down. Go up to the microphone, you calm them down. And the steward said, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing to be worried about. We are only two miles from land. Straight down. <laughs> Scout Cliff. Oh, the scout leader says, you see that cliff over there? And all the scouts says, yeah. The scout leader said, we're climbing that cliff next. And the little scout, his knees began to shake. And he says, do people fall off of that cliff often? And the scout leader says, no, once is enough. <laughs> Large crystal vase. Newspaper ad in classified. Just a minute. I want to make sure I get this right. For sale. Cut glass vase. By lady. Slightly cracked. Another one was... For sale, umbrella by man with one cracked rib. <laughs> I love those. Though English is such a great, great language for joking. Okay. Hypochondriac. Well, what was on the hypochondriac's grave stone? What was on the hypochondriac's gravestone? Hmm. See, I told you I was sick. <laughs> Got a couple more? Still? For sale, umbrella. What, darling? For sale, umbrella. Oh, we did that one. We did. Difficult to be a professor. Well, that's a good one. Student, is it difficult to become a professor? Professor, no. You do it by degrees. Eumenides. Excuse me? Eumenides. The ancient Greek, Phil. Mm hmm took his pants to the tailor, to the ancient Greek tailor, and the ancient Greek said, Eumenides? And the tailor said, Euripides? <laughs> toadstools. Teacher, describe toadstools. Little girl, toadstools are shaped like umbrellas, and that's why they live in damp places. Well, that's good. A couple more, hon? Octopus. Teacher, what is an octopus? Boy, an eight-sided cat. What else was on our list to tell the people? That was it for the... That was it? Mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, that was it. And then jokes, which we got. Well, I want to thank you for the spectacular job that you have done on organizing, let's see, there's eight columns and five in a column. It would be 40 uh, file boxes, on Yeah. 40 file boxes of electronics and uh, medical things and the um, uh, pull-ups and all those. And clothing. And, and what, dear? Clothing. And clothing and knee braces. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Phil? Tripods, uh, archives of a chat with Gondor that go way back mm -hmm. to 1953. Photographs and things from SS Glendora, your show. SS Glendora, right. Mm -hmm. 40 boxes. And you should see the beautiful organization and indexing that he has done. He has 
uh, the first two columns done, and then he has two more to do, and he'll be... Oh, we, we've gone through four columns. Coming into his grand glory. And Phil, we, was there anything else to tell anybody? We freed up five boxes today. Excuse me? We freed up five boxes. Yeah, empty boxes. That is true wealth. When you are so organized as to have uh, well, even one empty drawer and nothing in it, that is true organization. Phil, anything else we should add before we go? Um, we hmm. should sing a hymn, shouldn't we? Sure. Okay. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide in every way he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend. Through thorny paths leads to a joyful end. I sing like a prisoner filled behind eight bars looking for the key. <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We need a benediction. May the grace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ be with you and all those you love. Amen. <laughs>